Mr. Kane while I was employed at the Educational Foundation of the National Restaurant Association. About a month before I was terminated, I interacted with him on several occasions during the five days of the NRA convention in Chicago. Mr. Kane sat next to me at Marche Restaurant at dinner. He spoke to me throughout most of this dinner. During the conversation, uh, during the convention rather, there was also a luncheon at which high school students that had performed well in the industry were honored. Mr. Kane sat next to me at that luncheon and spoke to me extensively. Mr. Kane was the keynote speaker at the luncheon. He was incredibly inspirational. When he sat down, I said to him, when are you running for president? The final night of the conference, Mr. Kane sat at a table with me and my boyfriend. He was warm and attentive to both of us, and he invited us to join him at an after party in a suite at the hotel, which we did. I felt very honored to be included in this select gathering. About a month later, I was let go by the foundation. I was devastated. I loved the job and the industry, and in the short time that I had been there, I felt that we were really doing well in terms of fundraising. My boyfriend suggested that I should reach out to Mr. Kane to see if he might be able to help me find another job with the foundation or in some other capacity. He said, Herman seems to think highly of you. Why don't you contact him and see if you can ask him for some help? I did. I called Mr. Kane's office and left a message for Mr. Kane. He called me back. I told him that I had been let go, but he said he was unaware of it. I explained that I was going to be visiting my boyfriend's family and would be only a couple hours by train from D.C., which is where the NRA had its national office. I asked if we could perhaps meet for coffee. He said that he, that he would and that I should call once I had firmed up my dates and the arrangements. My boyfriend, since I was unemployed, booked a room for me at the Capitol Hilton and I called Mr. Kane to let him know my arrival date and that I would be staying at the Capitol Hilton. I asked him, well, where do you want to meet? Well, he suggested the lobby bar. This was in mid-July, 1997. I then took the train to Washington, D.C. When I checked into the room, I was shocked. Um, I had a palatial suite, and the bellman, I said to the bellman, there's got to be some mistake. But he insisted that there was no mistake. I later found out that Mr. Kane had arranged for the suite, though at the time, I thought maybe my boyfriend had tried to surprise me. I met Mr. Kane in the lobby of the bar at the Capitol Hilton at around 6.30 p.m. We had drinks at the hotel, and he asked how I liked my room, which is kind of normal, and I, was very, I said I was very surprised. I said, I can't believe that I've got this great suite, it's gorgeous. Um, Mr. Kane kind of smirked and then said, I upgraded you. He then took me to an Italian restaurant where we had dinner. During dinner, Mr. Kane looked at me and said, why are you here? I said, actually, Herman, my boyfriend, whom you met, suggested that I meet with you because he thought you could help me because I really need a job. I was wondering if there's anything available at the state association level or perhaps if you could speak to someone at the foundation to try to get my job back, perhaps even in a different department. He said, I'll look into that. He, while we were driving back to the hotel, he said that he would show me where the National Restaurant Association offices were. He parked the car down the block. I thought that we were gonna go into the offices so that he could show me around. At that time, I had on a black pleated skirt, a suit jacket, and a blouse. He had on a, a suit with his, shirt with his shirt open. But instead of going into the offices, he suddenly reached over and he put his hand on my leg, <coughs> under my skirt, and reached for my genitals. He also grabbed my head and brought it towards his crotch. I was very, very surprised and very shocked. I said, what are you doing? I, you know I have a boyfriend. This isn't what I came here for. Mr. Kane said, you want a job, right? I asked him to stop, and he did. I asked him to take me back to my hotel, which he, he did right away. 
When I returned to New Jersey, where I was staying with my boyfriend, that Mr. Kane had been, I told, when I was staying, when I returned back to New Jersey, where I was staying, I told my boyfriend, Mr. Kane had been very sexually inappropriate with me, and shortly thereafter, I told another friend of mine, who has been a mentor, the same thing. I didn't tell them the details, because quite frankly, I was very embarrassed at, that Mr. Kane had been sexually inappropriate to me. The last time that I saw Mr. Kane, actually, was about a month ago. I had been invited to the Tea Party Conference um, sponsored by WIND Chicago Radio in Chicago. I actually didn't know he was going to be there until the night before when my girlfriend told me. I went up to him and asked him, do you remember me? I, want, I, I guess I wanted to see if he was going to be man enough to own up to what he had done some 14 years ago. He acknowledged that he remembered me from the foundation, but he kind of looked uncomfortable. And he said nothing as he had it was whisked away for his speech by his handlers. During his speech, he had that same infectious presence that we had come to know and, and command as he did when I heard him speak for the first time 14 years ago at the NRA. But as I sat there in the audience, I kept wondering to myself, has he done to other women, women what he had done to me and whether anyone was going to speak up about it? I really hoped for his sake that in his candidacy that mine was not that mine was an isolated incident and that he had not exhibited those behaviors with other women. I didn't file a complaint against Mr. Kane as some of the other women did because I wasn't employed by the foundation when this occurred. But now I'm coming forward to give a face and a voice to those women who cannot or for whatever reasons do not wish to come forward and on behalf of all women who are sexually harassed in the workplace but do not come out of fear of retaliation or in public humiliation. I really didn't want to be here today and wouldn't have been here if it had not been for the three other women who have alleged sexual harassment against, against Mr. Kane. I want you, Mr. Kane, to come clean. Just admit what you did. Admit you were inappropriate to people. America is in a, and, and then move forward. America is in a horrible turmoil, as we all know. We need a leader who can set an example, which exemplifies the standards of a good person and moral character. Mr. Kane, I implore you, make this right so that you and the country can move forward and focus on the real issues at hand.